Hello and welcome to a Watches. This is Attack on Titan episode 78. So basically everything going on all of the time is like Zeke is on the floor. Eren is converging on that point. So is Gabby and Falco and Colt. They're all running there as well. Everyone's kind of meeting at this point, trying to stop Eren basically. Reiner, he seems like he's up again, ready to stop him. Porco seems out for the count. At any point, Zeke could scream. I don't know what his state is at the moment, if he's just like knocked out. He's not dead yet, I don't think. I think if Eren touches him, he can still activate the kind of founding Titan. Zeke can still scream and that would cause complete chaos and that chaos might be, you know, what Eren needs to be able to make it to him. But of course, if he does that, Falco would transform. And of course, Pixis and all of these other characters who have drunk the wine. It seems things are really ramping up here. I'm not sure what direction the show is heading because this seems like it would be the final fight this like arena we're kind of inch against you know again it seems fitting for this to be where the show ends it's like one final conflict but it seems like this conflict is already coming to an end it's been like three episodes so i don't know what happens from here you know so before we get into it be sure to check out the patron over there you can get full length timer based reactions so you can sync up your own footage as well if there's anything i cut out in the youtube edit that you wanted to see I'm watching the Funimation ones so you know where to sync it from and you can also access polls so you can vote for what's next so yeah let's just jump in two brothers yeah Zeke's down I guess that can mean Eren and Zeke or Falco and Colt he is so close yeah, it looked like it wasn't quite the name. Oh, Porco's still okay. Was that right in the nape? Oh, that looked like it hit his head. Like it looked like there was blood like on his face. Oh, okay, another shot. Yeah, McGaff is the only one up here who can has any range now. I think there should be more concern with Eren at the moment. That's Pixis and everyone. They they can all turn if Zeke screams. And Yelena's just kind of reveling in the chaos. Oh, his body is like completely torn, but he can still heal from that. So yeah, he is alive and conscious. He looked almost sad there. Oh my God. <laughs> it looked like part of his face was gone galleon, so he might be dead. Oh, he's getting memories. Was he giving those memories to Porco? If Galleon dies, the power would just go to a random person, wouldn't it? It'd just go to a random Eldian. Oh, he's gonna scream. Where's Falco? Oh no, Eren's stopping him, okay. Oh, he's seen, he's seen that Falco's right there. Is Eren protecting Falco? Does he care about Falco that much? He only met Falco a little bit. Yeah, you can see Zeke's actually concerned. They should have got Falco out of there instead of bringing Falco to the action, though. Is he just going to do it anyway? Yeah, he's just going to do it. Oh, 
Oh, I, oh that effect is great in the colors. <laughs> And Nile as well, Pixis. This is the effect that is really cool. You see their veins. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they just they just swarming the place now. That's Falco. Oh, Colt died as well. He was like grabbing onto him. Oh, it's just like Armin. Rhino wouldn't kill Falco though, would he? Yeah, no, he, he won't be able to do it. And now Aaron's getting back up, yeah. <laughs> That's just like his instinct to go for the shifters. Oh, That's a very clean hit. No, it can't have been that easy. It was Armin! They look like McGaff was okay. And Peek's still fine. <gasps> Is Zeke dead or did he already leave? Oh, let Falco take the armor. Oh my god. So much is happening. At least Falco gets to, you know, regain his consciousness, not just be a titan. He's not. Yeah, he finally saw. Falco's gonna go for him instead. <laughs> so Falco's the jaw. And that means Reiner gets to survive. What is this? Zeke's still okay. Okay, yeah. You just do it on foot this time. But Ryan is stuck in place. Yeah, they're helping Aaron to do it. Gabby? It's gonna end, isn't it? What? That was only half the episode. That felt like that was the end. There's no way. What is happening? Why are we getting this flashback now? Is he saying some sacrifice is necessary? Okay, so he's still taking this very nihilistic stance. Oh, this is when he gets the baseball. <laughs> oh,
This is cool. This is like 3D. Everything's stopped in time. He caught the head. Is he still conscious? Because your head can like still remain consciousness for a, like it's only been a second. Whoa. <laughs> We're in the paths. And Aaron's there. So it worked. So they're both here. Yeah, because this kind of exists out of time. Because we, we saw when he was getting healed earlier. He said it felt like he was there for hours. And she's there. The family Yumir. The one who made the deal with the devil. Oh, the music. Is it because Zeke isn't in control and Eren is? Restrict his freedom. Eren's all about freedom. But he's, he's not going to do it, is he? He's got other plans. What is he actually going to do, though? That was never the plan. Yeah. ここに来るために、あんたに話を合わせていただけだ。お前がここでやらなければ、この先も殺し合いは終わらない。俺たちが繰り返してきたことがずっと続く。思想を読める。俺に力を貸してくれ。Oh. Because she helped Zeke before. Like how she's got this like static effect on her. どういうことだ。こんな土くれの薬でも。おお。そして昨日遠くなる時間を始祖と共に過ごす中で。不戦の血切りを無力化していくことに成功した。絶大な力を持つ始祖優は自分の意志を持たぬ奴隷だ。死んだと思い込み。オッケー。し続ける。She Wow. Just wow. That might be the best episode of the show yet. Midnight Sun and Hero are definitely still up there, but I was literally like trembling, shaking, watching that. So what is happening now? Because is Zeke still going through with the euthanization plan? Or is he like trying to change Eren's mind? Because the heads hit at the end there. So I think that might be like a memory transfer like we saw with Reiner and Porco. So if there's a memory transfer, maybe Zeke is showing his memories to Eren in an act to try and convince him of the euthanization plan still. He said he wanted to save Eren like Saber did for him. But that could also go both ways. And Eren's memories transfer into Zeke as well. Zeke gains that perspective. Maybe then wanting to activate the rambling. There's a lot of things that could happen here. It seems like Zeke actually had doubts about Eren. Probably ever since he dropped the baseball. We did see Zeke react a bit there. 
so that kind of dropping of the baseball might be like a bit of symbolism for kind of mistrust there so maybe Zeke realized at that point Aaron might not be as trusting as he thinks he is so this episode is titled two brothers that could be Aaron and Zeke that could be Falco and Colt and it could be Galliard and Marcel as well you know there's a lot of brothers here there's that that could be interpreted as I mean it just kind of encapsulates all of them at this point really so we had like two self-sacrifices here Colt's one it seemed very much like Armin's because we see him lying there and he's all burnt up by I assume by Falco's transformation and he looked a lot like Armin and there's that kind of self-sacrifice we kind of see that again obviously Armin healed from his and then Galliard's one I think it makes more sense for Galliard to give himself up and to Falco to become the Jaw Titan just because there's been a bit less characterization for Galliard I didn't think Reiner would go out at this point here but like just truly anything is possible you know but it just didn't feel like the right time for Reiner just yet you know they call him the plot armor titan and once again he gets saved at the last minute by a bit of plot armor I am really glad that Falco isn't stuck in his titan form forever he's going to become a shifter so he re will like regain his consciousness but it does mean you know it's not like a perfect situation because he still has the 13 year curse but it's still better than him being a titan forever you know and there is that theory I had that Eren might be able to erase the titan ability because if he can affect the biology of the Eldians he could erase the titan transforming ability like erase titans from existence but he could also erase the curse of Ymir the 13 year curse as well perhaps and that means that Falco and Reiner could go on to live a long life after this hopefully so the moment when Zeke screams that was just gorgeous the music and just the visuals like the colors and the effects all of the filters they had over the screen we kind of had this like yellow coming out of his mouth and then all of the characters start to glow this yellow but it kind of has that kind of texture that some of the titans in the first three seasons had over them where you can kind of see the veins and the texture of their skin and then of course they transform causing chaos i don't think anyone else will turn into a shifter titan i think it will just be falco you know pixis and niall they are you know characters we've seen for a long time but i don't think they're important enough to become shifter titans at this point so they're probably just going to be stuck as titans and probably killed or something and then we had that kind of time stop 3d moment that was really cool you know that was when gabby had shot aaron's head off that came out of nowhere so it must have been that you know your consciousness can kind of still survive for like a second or two after being beheaded i'm pretty sure it's not like an instant instant death so it was still just enough time for zeke to catch the head and the founding titan's power is activated now i'm just imagining how much of a cliffhanger it would have been if the episode ended there i was fully expecting the episode to end like when the mid card came up i was thinking oh god it's the end and it was it was only the mid card i was so happy the last two episodes have felt really really short but this one it felt a bit longer for some reason even though this is my favorite episode and it was like the maybe just because how packed and condensed of information it was the last two episodes have been kind of action focused but this it seems a bit more story focused as of an episode and then of course the music this episode was just great we had some songs returning when everyone was turned into their titans and then the music with that kind of flashback montage of the coordinate and all the paths we were seeing like the royal family and seeing some flashbacks from Eren's perspective with that big eye that was really cool and then all of the music in the coordinate paths realm i think they just called that the coordinate all of the music there was just phenomenal it just created this real like mystery and sense of like epicness there you know and then we get there and we we finally meet ymir who is you know we've seen all of this marley propaganda of 
Ymir, the girl who did the deal with the devil, and she's like the originator of the Titan powers. And here she's just manifested as a little kid because every time we see her in like paintings and scriptures, she's like this older woman and she, she looks almost like the Statue of Liberty, like holding up a candle or something. But we actually see she's just a child and she's not really that free when she's in this realm, even though this realm is, you know, free from the bounds of time. She is always a slave to the royal blood. And this comes back to something that I've been thinking about Aaron and his kind of freedom, because he appreciates freedom so much. But him being the coordinator, being the attack titan, and seeing all of this kind of time travel shenanigans, you know, we saw the owl before he knew information from the future. And at this point where Zeke and Eren met, it was like a predetermined point, like a planned point. And it just makes me wonder, is Eren as free as he thinks he is? Or is all of this completely out of his free will? And is it just like a predetermined thing? Because it was like their meeting at this point was kind of predetermined. They didn't want to meet before now when they had plenty of opportunity to for Zeke and Eren to like make contact. They did it now for some reason. And I don't know if that's because Eren saw... He's like saw a vision and saw this is where we actually meet. But if he does that, does that mean that time is predetermined, you know? I've also heard this really interesting theory that because of the paths, the ending from the manga and this could differ. Obviously, I don't know how the manga ends, but I've heard, you know, there's been a bit of like a mixed response to it. So the theory is that at the end of the manga, Eren could have used paths to send memories back to himself so he could do a different ending for the anime. I think that would be really cool. I don't know if the show would go for that, but that would be something that would be, you know, a really cool thing to do. But people might think they're doing it just because some people didn't like the ending of the manga. And we see Armin and Mikasa, they've put their faith back in Eren now, and I'm not sure, I don't, I don't know what Eren is planning still, so I don't know if the faith in him is going to end up well. You know, if he activates the rumbling, will they regret what they've done helping him out here? Because if Mikasa and Armin didn't help take out Peek and Magath there, then Eren would never have reached Zeke probably, so they were like, a big part in this as well and if something happens like the rumbling will they regret this decision i don't know also i think mcgaff's okay right we saw mikasa slice those two people but i don't think one of those was mcgaff i think if it was mcgaff it would have been a bit more obvious that it was him that died okay so i think that's all i have to say thank you for watching this episode was just phenomenal I hope you liked this. If you did, consider leaving a like or a comment. And if you really loved it, be sure to subscribe to keep up to date for all of the future episodes. So yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.